okay. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Kitty here, and today I'm coming at you with a metaphorical build called the Grunt Build. I'm calling it the Grunt Build because this is going to be a micro ATX beast build that's going to cost around two grand, a little under. Um, it's an Intel build, obviously, and this build is really going to get you far in video editing, any 3D rendering you're doing, and is going to be an absolute beast at gaming, whether you're gaming at 1080p, 1440p, or even 4K, it's going to be able to handle this because this build does include the new GTX 980 Ti. Now this thing is going to be able to perform super duper well with the i7, but we'll get into the parts very very soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build. As I said before, it's a theoretical build, but you guys can build it if you want. And if you do, I would absolutely love it if you could send me pictures or maybe send me a video. I would like to see how it comes out and uh, let's get started. For the case, I chose a nan Nanoexia. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. I'm not absolutely sure. It's got an X in there, so sorry if I say that wrong. NXD S4B. This is a mini ITX, or micro ATX, sorry, case. This thing is definitely going to hold all your components well. It comes around at around $98 on Amazon right now. This thing's going to be able to hold all your shit. If you take out one of the drive bays, you're going to be able to fit the new 980 Ti in there, which is going to make your build absolutely beastly and tear up any game or almost any game you throw at it and be able to edit and render like a boss and do whatever other things you want to do with it. Now, this case also has plenty of drive bays. You can hold two disk drives if you want it. Um, there's not much room for water cooling, but we're probably just going to put a 120mm um, radiator in the back as the exhaust because there's not much room but we still want to water cool this bad boy because we know we want the best performance out of this so let's continue on with our build next for the motherboard i went with an asus mini itx ddd r3 2600 lga 1150 motherboard h97 i plus now this mother comes around motherboard sorry comes around about 120 dollars it's a little bit pricey but you're gonna be a absolutely getting a nice solid motherboard there are some cheaper motherboards out there personally i think if you get an i7 and you're just gonna throw a like 50 dollars motherboard at it that's just kind of throwing some fucking glitter on us and sprinkling it on a big pile of shit so honestly i would at least have a decent motherboard with my i7 processor this is going to be able to hold only two gigs of ram or two sticks might i add sorry and I would suggest going with whatever you're comfortable with, 16, 8, 4. It really depends on your preference. But this is an LG A1150, so this is going to be able to hold our i7 and get the best performance out of it. It's not the best motherboard out there, but I wanted to go with something that isn't too pricey, but is definitely going to be worth my time and money, and it's going to last us a long time. Now, the brain in this beast is the Intel i7-4790K, obviously I chose this Intel CPU is because it's just such a popular CPU and it's a complete and absolute beast at rendering, editing, gaming, everything you need to do, this CPU will get the job done. Now, if you're a little, you know, cheap, you can definitely go with an i5, i5 is definitely going to be able to handle the 980 Ti, no fucking problem. Um, but I chose the i7 because we're going for gaming and video editing or 3D rendering, whatever else you like to do. This is more of a workstation slash gaming build. But with this grunt build, you're going to be able to run everything great and smoothly and just get so much performance out of this i7 that you won't even know what to do with yourself. You're going to be rendering videos in a matter of 10 minutes at like 50 frames per second and all this other shit. But... Yeah, we went with this processor because it is a complete and absolute beast and will tear this PC up. Now to cool that i7, we're going with the Corsair Hydro Series H60. This thing is only a 120mm radiator with its 120mm fan, but this thing does a hell of a fucking job. This thing cools great and it's only around $65. That's not too bad for a decent cooler. There are some cheaper options out there. I would personally go with Corsair because they are a very trusted brand. Their um, components usually last a long time, and they're definitely well worth your money. This thing is absolutely going to be able to cool the i7 perfectly, without any flaws. 
It may not be able to get as much as a 240mm, then again we're in a micro ATX build so we really can't fit that anywhere, but this thing is absolutely going to get you through and allow you to overclock this i7 to around 4GHz and just get you complete and absolute madness of performance out of it. For RAM I'm going to go with the Corsair Vengeance Pro series, we're going to go 16GB, 2 8GB sticks running at 2400 megahertz this ram is absolutely going to destroy every video you try to edit that you throw at it this thing is just going to be amazing it's going to help render everything very very quickly and it's going to be able to run plenty of windows um if any games like dedicated ram or you know require higher ram this is definitely going to do the job for you for the power supply, I went with the Corsair CS Series 750 Watt ATX Modular Power Supply. Now I went with a modular power supply because you're definitely going to want to keep yourself organized in a micro ATX case. Because this micro ATX case is definitely going to, you know, really be small. You're going to want very organized cables if you're going to fit everything in here. It really depends on you. Um, personally, I would definitely go with this because it's going to be able to handle everything that you throw at it, including your new GTX 980 Ti. It's going to be able to handle that and all your fan cases and cooling and everything. It should be able to handle everything pretty efficiently. Since the card only uses around 600 watts, I'm pretty sure, you're going to have that left over 150 for anything else such as a CPU, um, system fans, or anything else that you need to run your computer. For the graphics card, we're obviously going with the EVGA G4 GTX 980 Ti Super Clock graphics card at around $670. Now this graphics card is pretty expensive, but it's definitely going to be worth your time and money. This thing's going to be able to play at 1440p, probably close to high to max settings. 4K not so much, but it's going to be able to play any game at 4K. Even if it's at low settings or medium, you're probably going to get medium to high settings out of it. And 1080p, it will tear shit up. You're really not going to need it for 1080p, but, you know, it's still there if you really want to play 1080p, downgrade a game or whatever. But this thing's going to be able to handle gaming perfectly. It's going to be able to render things very, very fast and help you with any 3D editing you have in store. For drives, I went for a Samsung 840 EVO 250GB SSD drive. This is going to be for your games, just kind of chill in there, or this could be for your OS. It really depends on you, because I'm also getting a Samsung 850 EVO series 250GB SSD as well. So we're going to have two of those. One can be for just your OS and maybe important files or programs, and the other can be for any games that you want to put on there, such as Grand Theft Auto, Battlefield 4, Hardline, whatever. Any game that has very long loading times, maybe maybe Witcher 3, it's going to run your games way quicker and way better than you actually thought they would with a hard drive. Hard drives are much slower than SSDs, so I would definitely suggest that. And for our mass storage drive, we're going to go with the Western Digital Black Series 3 terabyte hard drive. This is going to be able to hold all of your other games coming around 152 gigabytes. The 850 EVO is around 98, and the 840 EVO is around 166. So these are a tad bit pricey, but they're going to be able to get you a lot of storage in this thing. Because I know you're going to be editing and gaming, and you're going to definitely want a lot of space for that. Gaming especially since games are currently increasing in gigabytes. And so is videos if you're rendering in higher than 1080p, 60 frames per second. Those files are going to be very, very large. And lastly, I'm going with an Asus DRW CD Writer. This thing is just a DVD drive for only $19, very, very cheap. It's going to get the job done. And also with that, we're getting a Microsoft Windows 7 Home Premium. That comes around $86. You can get it on Amazon way cheaper, around $65 if it's refurbished. All they do is give you a disc and a code and you're good. I personally would go that route because you're going to get it way cheaper and it's who doesn't like to save money on a build. But that's it, guys, for this grunt build. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to like, favorite, and subscribe. If you guys do build this computer, like I said before, please send it in. And if you did build it, I hope you have a good time with it. I hope it works out for you. Um, that's it for this theoretical build guide. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.